The Learning Sea. Kung Fu Panda Holiday. Dad, this dream is awesome! said Poe, as he and Mr. Pink battled giant vegetables kung fu style. Your reign of tears is over! He told an onion, slicing it in half. Mr. Pink grinned ecstatically as he cooked with Poe in a wonderful noodle dream. Suddenly, Poe's old enemy, Tai Lung, appeared. Poe chased after him as Mr. Pink yelled for him to wait. Sorry, Dad, yelled Poe. Evil doesn't take a holiday. And neither do I. Mr. Ping awoke and screamed so loud that Poe smashed through the door looking for intruders. It was just a dream. I'm not going anywhere. Poe comforted him. Mr. Ping followed Poe downstairs to the noodle shop, where the two unpacked decorations for the winter festival. Whoa, right on top. It's the sun lantern I made when I was a cub, said Poe. Mr. Ping admitted that he had opened the box last summer just to look at the lantern. He loved Winter Festival so much, he just couldn't wait. Me too, said Poe. The decorations, the dancing, huh, Dad, the dancing. Poe swung his father into a dance and they boogied around the kitchen. Poe danced to the stove and was slurping up a pot of noodles when Master Shifu appeared in the doorway. I've come to talk to you about the Winter Feast at the Jade Palace. You will be- Becoming the Winter Feast with the Kung Fu Masters from all the provinces? Poe interrupted. No, Poe, you will not be invited. Shifu told him. Poe sighed. You will be hosting, said Shifu. Me? <laughs> said Poe. The Winter Feast is legendary. I bet you got the best, biggest, brightest sun lanterns and dancing. Oh, Shifu stopped him. Dancing and sun lanterns, those are common traditions. This is the winter feast. It mm. is perfection. Always elegant, yeah. always formal, said Shifu. Awesome. I'm all about elegant, said Poe. I mean, dancing, come on. Sun lanterns, <laughs> weak. Poe saw that Mr. Ping had overheard, but didn't notice his sad expression. Dad, isn't this great? He cried. Mr. Ping forced a smile as Poe was called away to fight some bad guys. Poe joined the Furious Five, Monkey, Mantis, Viper, Tigress, and Crane as they battled some villainous boars. Dispatching the boar bandits expertly and awesomely, Poe told the five that he was going to host the Winter Feast. The Furious Five were surprised and a little concerned. They hinted delicately that the celebration was very sophisticated. Poe pushed one boar aside, then squashed another with his bottom. Why does everyone think I can't do sophisticated? He asked. The five assured Poe that they had confidence in him. They just wondered if he needed a little help. I got this, said Poe as the last boar fell. It's dinner, eating, entertainment. <laughs> How much do you have to know? Later, at the Jade Palace, Poe quickly realized it would not be so simple. There are 18 gestures you must memorize for the right hand, 19 for the left, Shifu said, launching into a seemingly endless list of instructions. Each place setting required 40 chopsticks and 7 bowls. There must be flaked jasmine, never ground, always flaked. Poe must hang tapestries four and a half inches apart. No more, no less. He must guard the scrolls containing the ancient recipes for all 27 courses of the meal. And he must learn to chant the traditional greeting of the masters. Poe was overwhelmed. At least his dad would enjoy such a grand feast, Poe thought. But Shifu told him there were absolutely no guests allowed other than the Kung Fu masters. And that included Mr. Ping. But he's my dad. We always spend the holiday together. Poe protested. I understand, Poe, said Shifu, but he was firm. You are the dragon warrior now, and therefore this is your duty above all other pawns. Poe was still thinking about his dad as Shifu continued his instructions. Poe caught something about a golden ladle. 
What? He said, confused. Poe, hire a chef. Present them with the golden ladle. Said Shifu, shooing him toward the line of hopeful chefs Zhang had assembled. Do not let me down. Shifu warned. Zhang presented the first chef, a small rabbit named Wohop, who eagerly offered Po an ornate dish. As Po glanced up, he saw a monkey passing by and waved to him. Instantly, the rabbit was whisked away by stern goose attendants. What just happened? asked Po. Zhang told him that as host of the festival, his every gesture had meaning. Po had just given Wohop the ancient Hun Shu wave of dismissal. Po gaped. The what? Is that a thing? It, that doesn't even sound like a thing. Can't we just get the rabbit back? But Zhang refused and called the next chef. Then Po brightened. His dad was a chef. I'll choose my dad. Then I'll get to spend the holiday with him, Po decided. He looked at all the amazing dishes and steeled himself to reject them. Hate the food, Po told himself. Hate the food. Each dish was more wonderful than the last, but after tasting all of them, Poe still refused to name a winner. Nice try, everyone. See you next year! He called as he grabbed the golden ladle and sprinted toward the noodle shop. Mr. Ping was thrilled to be asked to prepare a meal for all the great Kung Fu masters, but when Poe told him it would be tomorrow night for the winter feast, Mr. Ping hung his head. He handed back the ladle and said he couldn't do it. What? Why not? demanded Poe. His father sighed and told him he, he couldn't leave the restaurant. Their friends depended on him. So did the lonely people who had no place else to go. Poe knew that his father's motto was, there's always room for one more at Mr. Ping's. It's just, I thought this was a way for us to be together on the holiday, said Poe. Mr. Ping said he wanted that too. But I can't be here. I have responsibilities to Shifu. What do you expect me to do? Po protested. Mr. Ping handed Po the sun lantern. He told Po he expected him to do the right thing. The next day, Po was frantically trying to cook all 27 courses by himself when Wohop appeared. Oh, awesome, a real chef, Po cried. But Wohop was there to fight, not cook. Though he would surely die in the attempt, he had to battle the dragon warrior to reclaim his honor. He began jabbing Poe vigorously with a wooden spoon. When Wohop took a break from his attack, Poe remembered the Furious Five. That's it! He shouted. And you, Bunny? If you even want me to think about your death with honor, you're gonna have to help me in the kitchen. This may be our greatest challenge ever. Poe told the assembled five. Monkey asked if it was bandits. Viper guessed raiders. No, said Poe grimly. Place settings. As he called out kung fu moves, the five sent plates spinning like throwing stars. They leapt through the air with lanterns and tapestries. Soon the table was set, the ice sculpture carved, the decorations hung, and the meal prepared. You guys are the best, said Poe. 29 place settings, 40 chopsticks each. Crane gave a satisfied nod. Every detail was just right, he noted, even down to the ground jasmine. Ground jasmine? Said Poe. It was supposed to be flaked. Poe raced down to the spice shop for flaked jasmine. He had no time to spare, but the beauty of the village stopped him. The cozy cottages were hung with colorful decorations. Friends welcomed each other into their homes for the holiday. Poe sighed as he watched a father bunny help his son hang a sun lantern. Poe made it back to the palace just in time to start the feast. Shifu was pleased. Beautiful, elegant, perfect, he said. You've made me proud. Then louder he asked. Dragon warrior, would you honor us by reciting the opening words to the creed of the masters? Uh, I can't, Master Shifu, said Poe. Shifu leaned over. I thought you might forget the words, so I took the liberty of writing them on your napkin. Poe shook his head. That's not it, he replied, standing to address everyone. 
the Creed of the Masters is amazing. It's like the coolest Creed ever. And uh, you Masters, how cool are you guys? Poe continued. Master Rhino? Forget about it. You're more awesomely skilled and wrinkly than I'd ever dreamed you'd be. And, uh, Master Sheep, Fluffy, and the Five, it's just such an honor to be here with all you guys. But every feast, my dad and I spend all day cooking together, Poe continued, and the whole neighborhood shows up, and it gets really loud and crazy, and my Uncle Yang ends up laughing so hard, noodles spurt out his nose. I wish I could stay and be a good host, but I think I need to leave and uh, be a good son. Meanwhile, Mr. Ping was having a terrible time trying to run the noodle shop by himself. Poe stepped in to help as his dad staggered under a pile of boxes. I got that, Dad, oh, he said. Mr. Ping was overjoyed to see Poe. Now don't we have some cooking to do? Poe said happily. Poe and Mr. Ping cooked together even more beautifully than they had in Mr. Ping's dream. And together, they served steaming bowls to the large crowd gathered in the courtyard. All the Kung Fu masters had followed Poe to the noodle shop and were now joyfully eating alongside the villagers. Only Shifu remained outside, staring in. I don't understand, he said to himself. Poe, why did you ruin something that was perfect? Then he watched as Master Rhino told stories to the village children, and Tigress bounced them on her knee. He saw Poe present the golden ladle to a happy Wohop, restoring the little rabbit's honor. Then Shifu understood. This is perfect, he said. Poe found Shifu and invited him in. There's always room for one more at Mr. Ping's, he said. Oh no, I couldn't. These are your people. This is your family, said Shifu. You're my family too, Shifu, Poe told him. Come on. Mr. Ping welcomed Shifu and asked him to join them for some soup. Wohop served the table. Everyone was together and happy at last. Poe, said Shifu. What goes on in your head, I really don't always understand. But what goes on in your heart will never let us down. And the winter feast continued in joyful celebration. The end. Thank you. Please like and subscribe our channel.